Greetings, magical one. I am Cindy Brannon, and this is an episode of the Keeping Her Keys podcast. In this episode, I am going to be talking about the five queens of the tarot, uh, how, ways to connect and work with them, and deepen your understanding of these five tarot goddesses. If you are following these podcasts and a member of the Keeping Her Keys coven, this podcast comes um, as kind of ritual aftercare for our Sovereign Goddess workshop. It's a way for you to go deeper with the medicine that you received in our ritual, whether you did um, it on your own through the guided audio if you're listening to this, if you go to the, the previous episode before this, you'll find that God, guided audio. So it's really great if you do that and then come back to this podcast. Everything will make so much more sense. Um, if you participated in our fabulous live ritual, um, we just had so many there and it was so powerful. The medicine was really, really just amazing and the energy was fabulous if you're not a member of the coven um, go to keepingyourkeys.com slash coven to learn how you can join the coven um, for the first month free to check it out to see if our modern online coven network is what you need to claim your own sovereignty and awaken the goddess within you so Let's talk about the queens of the tarot, and um, I just want to put a couple of caveats at the beginning of our conversation here. Uh, first of all, that it is a conversation. You know, these are my interpretations of the four queens plus the empress based on my years of study of the tarot um, and how they kind of map onto the five goddesses that we connect with and awaken within in the sovereign goddess uh, ritual, which is uh, within the coven structure, within our tradition, we do it on the summer solstice. The sovereign goddess ritual, you can do anytime. It is a ritual that, you know, you draw in the energy of the sun. The sun always shines. So you can really do it anytime that's right for you. But within the coven structure, we do it each year um, on the summer solstice. So we're two days after this really powerful ritual. We're just in the throes of this huge transitional period, this huge crossroads where we're seeing, um, you know, the astrological forces are really, really amplified right now. And studying um, the tarot this way in this kind of like strategic focused study of certain cards in the tarot is a really great tool for understanding ourselves better and ultimately helping us process ritual experience, helping us navigate, um, you know, the crossroads period that we're in as individuals, that we're in as a planet. So it's about taking the tarot deeper um, in order to understand ourselves better and also will ultimately help us understand the cosmos, the goddess, um, and even the world in which we live better by studying the tarot this way. I've got another little note I would like to make. Um, the queens are symbolic of the sacred feminine. Um, the high priestess is sometimes included as one of the tarot queens. I'm going to be talking about the high priestess in a podcast episode uh, next month. So, and that's when we're, that's our month that we're, we're calling it the Nyssa month. It is the month about ritual and beginning ritual and um, commitment into the mysteries of the goddess. So I'm going to talk about the high priestess card um, in conjunction with talking about being the high priestess of our own lives. I'm using gendered language. The queens are gendered. I want you to know that when I'm discussing the queens or using gendered language, I am mixing, I guess, what would be traditional interpretations of femininity um, 
and applying them in a new way. So it's not, I'm not just discussing these queens for anyone who is identifying as a woman. I am discussing them as representatives of traditional ways of seeing uh, feminine power. So this is obviously a complicated discussion. Uh, I am using the modern interpretation of the queens in the tarot as power with. So that means the queens are about having the power comes from within. It is very sovereign energy. It is about having power with others. Whereas the kings would be about having power over others. And the kings would be about getting power from others. The queens are generating power from within. And the kings are like drawing power from others to increase their power. So you can take away kind of, you know, this stereotypical discussions about femininity and masculinity and look at it that way. The queens represent power with and the power comes from within and the kings represent power over and drawing from others to increase your own power. Neither is right or wrong. That is just a distinction between the queens and the kings using kind of a modern take on the traditional ways of understanding these cards in the tarot. Um, the pages and the princes or the princesses and the princes, however you want to call them, they're about learning power with, learning power over. But we see in the queens and the kings, the embodiment, the attainment of these things. So, you know, it, it's not so much about what you would how you identify in terms of a gender label it is about how you see power um, and where your source of power comes from if that makes sense and like i said neither is good nor bad that is just a kind of contemporary lens applied to uh, the meaning of these cards in a traditional way how can you work with these five cards so we're talking about you know the queen of swords the queen of pentacles the queen of wands and the queen of cups so how can you and the empress of course how can you work with these cards there's so many different ways to work with these cards um you know the first of course is if you draw one in a reading and then interpreting them in the sovereign goddess ritual structure it is recommended a few days after you do the ritual if you don't do it kind of right afterwards to do a five card reading where um, you position each of the queens as an anchor card and then you pull a card for the wisdom of that queen for you the, you know and you just go through so it's like the five card pull um, you can use the five queens as anchors which means they're the dominant energy any card you pull after that is going to be oh that's the wisdom of the queen of cups for me that's the wisdom of the empress for me and so on so that's to do a reading um, or they can just spontaneously come up in your daily reading you know if you do a two card daily reading if you get the queen what's her message what's her medicine for you for that day the other way um, that is really powerful to work with these queens is to choose one as what's known as a significator or a power card and that is the workshop that we're doing um, in conjunction with this podcast in the coven. So that's going to be taking place in a few days. Um, you know, if you can't join us live, there'll be a recording. And if you're listening to this long after the summer solstice, um, you can join the coven and find the recording and follow up that way and learn more about finding your tarot significator card um, as one of these five queens. I have a couple of videos on YouTube and in the coven uh, that talk about significator cards. So significator cards or power cards are really phenomenal ways to go deep into the medicine of a particular card. And often a significator card is like a reflection of our de like our soul, like who we really are. Um, and we 
have the card, one of these five queens is going to really intuitively resonate with us. So as you look at those five cards, you know, you get your deck out, you pull out those five cards, um, and you just like, what are you naturally drawn to? I'm going to talk more in details about the attributes, powers, shadow issues of these of the five queens. So, you know, that'll give you some more insight into picking one. And then once you do pick one, you can set up an altar to her. It's kind of a self-love, a self-appreciation altar. It's about becoming more of who you already are. You know, it's about being better based on what you already have. So that's how we you know, we use those significator cards. They are really like a reflection of our soul. They're like a mirror. They're sometimes where we're going, right? Like I'm, you know, we're I'm the queen of uh, swords and I want to embody those aspects of the queen of swords. I already have those and I want to make the best of those aspects. So that's how you would work with them as a significator or power card. You can also work with them um, in terms of an aspirator, like an aspirational card. So, you know, it could be, um, I'm very, very queen of cupsy, very emotional. You know, you can be really focused on emotions um, and feelings and you tend to get consumed by a lot. Well, a good counterpoint for that is the queen of, uh, queen of swords, rather, who tends to be very aloof and detached. So you can kind of see, you know, like our significator card is a complementary a card. And then uh, if we wanted to work with a card that we, you know, that's kind of like our missing card or one that we want to pull out more, then that is a card that's kind of like a corrective uh, card that we would bring in. So lots of different ways to work with these five queens, those are just a few of them. Um, I wanted to talk about the Empress. I think I'm going to talk a little bit about the Empress first, and then we'll circle back to her. So the Empress in kind of like the Rider Waite Smith, or even the Thoth, or you know, more like these versions. She's often depicted as uh, like the mother, the great mother. And because of kind of like stereotypical views of motherhood, that this is sometimes really just reduced to like pregnancy, childbirth, rearing children. That is not at all the limitations of the Empress. The Empress is Anima Mundi, the very soul of the world, the great mother. And as such, the Empress embodies all four of the other queens. She is the completion. Each of the queens is uh, governed by an element in addition to the suit. Um, and the Empress is like all four elements come together to make that fifth one. Um, so if you think of like the five-pointed star and each of the elements is one of the star and then the, at the top, it represents all of those elements coming together in a synergistic fashion. So the Empress is just a lot. She is a really complex card to draw in a reading, or if she you want to work with her as your significator, you know, it's, it's like embodying everything and having all of that within you, having all four elements within you. Now, of course, we do have all four elements within us. We do have all four suits within us. Most of us are going to be really dominant in one of the suits. And that is often influenced by our astrological chart. The queens and the empress are governed more by the moon than by the sun. In particular, the four queens of the suits are governed by water, which is, you know, the governance of the moon. And what that means is that if you want to understand kind of what card, what significator card, what queen you might be in terms of one of the four suits, that it's really helpful if you look at where your moon sign is. So you might like look at your sun sign and be like, um, 
you know, I don't really resonate with the Queen of Cups and my sun sign is Pisces. But my moon sign is Capricorn and the Queen of Pentacles really resonates with me. So that's, you know, if you are comfortable with looking at your chart that way, I really recommend looking at your moon um, so you can get a better idea of where your queen really is, like who your true queen is, who you are within the four queens. And because of this rulership of the queens by water, which is emotion, which is the moon. Um, the queens represent, the four queens represent each a different facet of the cave or the womb different caves you know um, the queen of pentacles her her cave is very much an earthy cave the queen of fire is like the cave inside a volcano um the queen of wands so the queen of swords her cave is like in the cliff top somewhere um and the queen of cups you know she's got like that underwater chamber so these are all the cave is the womb and because all the queens are ruled by water there is that inner aspect that the queen is about like i said power from within um you know that that womb power um so look at those aspects of like what is your cave um what do you grow from your womb uh you know it's not the womb is not just about like physically getting pregnant it's about you know the queen of swords she grows from her womb words the queen of cups it's emotions uh the queen of wands is very much like her about passion and the queen of pentacles is very much about really being that earth mother which is about you know like material possessions um, comfort you know so what is your womb what is your cave and then the empress of course as the great mother her womb is like where all of creation comes from all of the elements all of the suits the whole thing so if you feel that you are very much a queen of wands this is often associated with aries leo sagittarius um, the archetype is the wanderer you know the fiery wanderer wanderer with spelled like w-a-n-d-e-r-e -E -R -E. i think i got that right and also wonder w-o-n-d-e-r-e-r -E -R -E -R. um both types of wandering the queen of wands is often a really amazing escape artist the queen of wands you know she doesn't want her fire can't burn bright when she, she's not getting a lot of room she's very passionate um, and sensing and perceiving are really like her superpowers you know like so is the room too hot is the room too cold is the blanket too scratchy um, is that person over there giving her the side eye so the the queen of wands is very about perception and passion freedom is really important to the queen of wands and her freedom is very much about like exploration and adventuring um and like i said if she gets caged in and her fire can't burn <coughs> she gets really kind of like the, her fire can be used against you the queen of wands is really about insight you know about looking at what is happening what, she, what she's perceiving and then illuminating that with her fire she's very much ruled by the root you know our root she's associated with sexuality and passion and she's very charismatic in the sense that you know it's she's that person you meet and maybe like in terms of, you know, what science would tell us is an attractive or, you know, sexually appealing person. Maybe she doesn't have that, but yet you can't stop looking at her. She has that kind of charisma about her that is like an embodied 
kind of charisma where you kind of know that there is a fire within her that she's really bright and fiery so like moth to a flame you know we can be drawn to the queen of wands for sure um the queen of wands shadow challenges are about balancing her need for freedom with other people so the queen of wands when she's just left to her own devices she usually does just fine because she is a sexual being because she does draw heat from other people she does get involved with really intense relationships and what tends to happen with the queen of wands shadow side is that this comes out as avoidance so you know she's like i don't want to be hurt again you know i don't want to share my fire with you i've shared my fire before and i've gotten burned so she her issue is avoidance avoidance of others um and just that kind of distancing and not wanting to deal with things because she's like if i deal with this it's going to be a big fiery explosion so i'm just going to avoid that so that is like the shadowy side the fiery queen when she is shadowy she also can be super possessive um in like the mind mind i've shared my fire with you and now we're together in this fire so because you're you've got some of my fire attached to you now you're mine um and you know it's good in a healthy dose to be a little bit possessive but shadow queen of wands is like when she gets someone in her fiery circle, she ends up burning them up and burning herself up. The other thing that the Queen of Wands does, because like when she's in your life and she's shining that torch, you really see her. But as soon as she turns her fire away from you, that's it. So she is like what, you know, like a ghoster. Like she would be likely to just like, because avoidance is her challenge, She's likely just to be ghosting someone. So if this describes you, it's neither bad nor good. It is just, you know, a caveat about where your shadow energy is going to lie. Avoidance, ghosting. Um, sometimes we need to avoid and sometimes we need to ghost. It's just something for you to be aware of um, going forward. The Queen of Wands is very much the guide. You know, she is about action and guiding, um, you know, like you can kind of see her. She's going to take you on a trek through the underworld, through the Himalayas. She is that adventurer who's going to be your guide. She is not going to be the one who micromanages your life. And she is governed by actions. So to um, if you are the Queen of Wands, your actions are what speaks loudest for you. And also, you are going to value the actions of others. That's going to be like the real um, gold for you is this. Uh, what else do you need to know? Oh, I added a couple of fun things to the, to the list of attributes for our queens. So I put, um, in terms of our appearance and what we might wear, so the queen of wands is really go more likely to be like wearing belts like things that are associated with the root belts and also boots are really great footwear because again she's all about the roots so that's a little bit about the queen of wands and if you did the sovereign goddess ritual and you're in this teaching of mine in terms of learning the sovereign goddesses the queen of wands is associated with artemis and if you work with other goddesses you know you can see um, how your different goddesses you work with may map onto the Queen of Wands as well. So let's move on now. I think I'll do Pentacles, the Queen of Earth, uh, next. So her signs, again, thinking like, look at your moon signs to see uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and she is the grounded. Um, the Queen of Pentacles is really associated with structure and order her physical kind of home base are the bones um, and she's really concerned with reciprocity so the queen of wands leads with her heart um, but she's really about this 
interpersonal interaction, um, this exchange, you know, like where the Queen of Wands is all about action. The Queen of Pentacles is really about interaction, like almost exchange. So it's like, I do this thing in the world and then what, how do others interact? Um, you know, what's that exchange? And she's very much in this system of interaction, interpersonal, very grounded. She's also the giver of the queens. And, you know, she's likely to give you really huge gifts. If you are the queen of pentacles, it's likely that you give really great gifts. The queen of pentacles is really about being connected, um, about accumulation. And again, this isn't negative, but you know, about collecting things, about having lots of beautiful magical treasures, for example, you know, she's got lots of that stuff. If you're the queen of pentacles, you probably have all kinds of amazing magical things, crystals and jewelry and all these things. Uh, the Queen of Wands is really a great mediator. So at solving problems in terms of getting other people to get along with each other, um, that is her role. Again, because she's really dominated by this mixture of earth and water. And you think that all of the queens are within the realm of water, within the realm of emotions. And so the queen... The Earth Queen mixes emotions with her groundedness, so it makes her a really great mediator. Some of the shadowy aspects, um, the challenges that if you are the Queen of Pentacles is a preoccupation with other relationships. So this is about, again, because when we think of relationships, they are possessions, right? They are things, they are material things that exist in and of themselves. And so shadowy Queen of of pentacles can get into this kind of preoccupation mode where she's hyper focused on relationships um, and almost like giving too much to them and because she has this need for reciprocity when she gets really preoccupied and is over giving and you know like her boundaries are not in place what happens is this like boomerangs back and she gets her heart really broken because, again, she's governed by the heart, right? And she gets really crushed when her heart gets broken. Um, related to this preoccupation tendency for shadowy energy within the Queen of Pentacles is also this helicoptering energy. So, you know, she can be the parent, for example, who doesn't let her kids have any space. And that, again, is shadowy energy because she is so much about material you know like accumulating material things again this isn't bad it's just like you know she wants her kids to have all of the courses all of the experiences all of the things and she wants to do it in a structured way and that can really get into this kind of helicoptering behavior the other thing is because she is so earthy shadowy queen often gets really stuck in her ways the overall archetype for the Queen of Pentacles is the manager, and her energy is interactions. So let's move on now to the Queen of Swords. Her signs are Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, the signs ruled by air. Her overall energy is that of the climber. She is the ascender. And this is because this queen is all about intellect, whereas the queen of pentacles is all about interpersonal aspects and the queen of wands is all about insight. The queen of swords loves intellect. Mind games are her specialty, her curiosity, um, and all those things. And language is very much central to the queen of swords. She is governed by the throat for an energy center. So if you are the queen of swords, um, you know, you might like to wear a lot of scarves, things around your throat. That's very queen of scarvesy, queen of scarvesy, queen of swordsy. 
Um, whereas with pentacles, those queens are about jewelry, gowns, kind of like finery. You know, like I want to really embody this earthiness of mine. The queen of swords is more like I'm going to wear scarves. Um, you know, she keeps her accessories to a minimum. She likes suits, monochromatic vibes. You know, she, the queen of swords is very much about where she is so focused on the mind and intellect. Sometimes her appearance, if she's not paying a lot of attention to it, you know, like she can be pretty basic, right? Just give me pants and a shirt and off I go. I'm the queen of swords. I've got thoughts to think um, and I'm climbing higher and higher. I'm ascending within myself so I can go greater into the mystical heights. This is very much the queen of swords where she's at. Um, like I said, she's really about language, thought, and she's also the queen of boundaries. So when we see with the queen of pentacles, you know, she's all about like interactions and the queen of wands is very much about freedom. The queen of swords is all about using that sword of hers to be like, you are not in my circle. You are outside of my circle. This is what's in my circle. The queen of swords, where she does have this sword, she can be very cutting you know, so the boundaries, cutting with her words. This is not meanness. This is just her orientation as the queen of swords and being so ruled by language, ruled by intellect, that, you know, she is the one who is the decisive one. Whereas with the queen of pentacles, you know, she's decisive, but she's going to take a lot of people's opinions into consideration and, you know, be that mediator. The Queen of Wands is decisive in a very different way, <clears throat> where she's like, this is passionate, this is, you know, what feels right to me, and I'm going to just go for it. It's, so it's a very different kind of energy. Uh, the Queen of Swords is very much associated with integrity, and integrity is super important to all of us who are Queen of Swords. And the way to wound a Queen of Swords is to violate this, to not be a person of integrity. That is what's going to, to get you in trouble with the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords shadowy side is that she can be really unknowable. Um, and she can do this on purpose. So it becomes shadowy when she moves into being like an isolationist. Like I am going to be here on my island ruling as the Queen of Swords with my sword. Nobody's getting on my island. Um, she can be thus very dismissive. If you think of the energy of the sword compared to the wand, you know, the wand might burn you up. But when the wand is no longer on you, whew, it's gone. The sword leaves a lasting imprint. So the queen needs to be really careful of that. And in trad more traditional versions of the tarot, the queen of swords was really vilified as the deceiver um, and all of these really horrible attributes were put on her. And again, this is largely because of, you know, those really strict negative views about women who weren't primarily focused on, you know, hearth and home and, you know, those kind of energies. Because that's not the, the, the queen of swords, even if she is a mother, um, she's going to live in the realm of air. You know, her cave is of the cliffs. So she's going to parent, um, you know, from her cliff top and, you know, she can be a fantastic mom. Like all of the queens can be amazing moms. It's not that anyone is better than the other, but there is a different style. So because of the queen's shadowy challenge in terms of being dismissive, that's a real, you know, that's something to pay attention to. Are you just having good boundaries or are you being dismissive? The archetype of the Queen of Swords is as the teacher. You know, she is very learned and scholarly and has a lot of knowledge to impart. Um, and she likes to literally like arrange the people in her life like pupils in her classroom, which can be awesome. Um, it's not always appropriate. And of course, words are her superpower. So now let's move on to, oh, sorry. So within the Sovereign Goddess's ritual, Circe is the queen of air. For pentacles, it's Persephone. 
and for wands it is Medea. So let's move on to the last one. Sorry, for wands it is Artemis. Now we're moving on to Medea, the Queen of Cups. So Medea is the Queen of Cups because she was so ruled by emotion. And so Queen of Cups is like double emotion. It's like emotion on top of emotion. The river of emotion and then there's the other river of emotion. And if you are the Queen of Cups, you swim in these very, very deep waters that are emotional, governed, really governed by the moon and so on. And that is... Um, why Medea is positioned within the ritual as the Queen of Cups, because it was her emotions that really, really pulled her into these situations where she had to react. And she learned to control her emotions and to use her emotions for her benefit, ultimately. Signs associated with the Queen of Cups are Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, the Queen of Cups is the Descender. So Fire, the Queen of Wands, was the Wanderer. Queen of Pentacles is the Grounded. Queen of Swords is the Climber. And Queen of Cups is the Descender. You love to go into the depths, deeper, deeper, the emotional depths, um, really understanding your own feelings. One of your greatest superpowers is your ability to merge, whether it's with the goddess, whether it's with, you know, your familiar um, or a partner. You can really merge and blend your own energy with them and to better understand where they're coming from. Um, blood is the part of the body associated with the Queen of Cups and validation is what you need from other people. So the Queen of Swords, she needs to express herself. You need to be heard if you are the Queen of Cups. You're very much ruled by intuition and the part of your body is your belly, your gut, your gut instinct. Um, and you can be, you know, very consumed by it all because you are so deeply into emotions. You can really have this tendency just to be like consumed by intuition um, and so on. So that is kind of associated with the shadowy aspects of the Queen of Cups, which is like this incredible anxiety and that you can become silent and unstable and also clingy because your anxiety really can get the best of you. And where you are so intuitive, where you are so good at merging with other people, um, this can cause some instability. So your shadow message is to you know, work on not being so anxious, work on, um, you know, borrow some from the Queen of Swords about her boundaries and give the Queen of Swords some of your ability to merge, kind of do a swap there. Um, analysis is really your super strength um, and you tend to be more mysterious. So whereas the Queen of Swords is kind of unknowable, you're more like mysterious. It's like, what is she doing uh, in terms of like, it's just a little mysterious that's not so aloof as that Queen of Swords. Silence is often your go-to um, because, again, you're taking it all in, right? Um, let's see. In terms of how you might express the Queen of Swords in your appearance, because the Queen of Swords is about listening, earrings, um, and also sweaters because you're so deep, you're always in those depths. Um, you may find, you know, like be like literally like you need to keep your body really warm um, because you're in these depths. I mean, that can go if the Queen of Wands isn't getting her fire stoked, she's going to get super chilly too. So everyone can kind of get chilly. But um, the Queen of Cups is really about earrings. Um, and the, those kind of adornments that will help her to perceive others. The Queen of Cups loves to get gifts. Um, and she, because she is so caring that when someone gives her a gift, she perceives it as, oh, thank you. Um, you know, you care deeply about me. So she takes things on this kind of caring level, whereas the Queen of Pentacles is more about giving. So if you are following my book, Keep the Keeping Her Keys book, or if you're in uh, the Keeping Her Keys course called The Mist Eye, <coughs> we, 
we work on three governing principles, which is integrity, which is swords, uh, which is fire, which is uh, wands. And then we divide kindness into giving and caring. So that's a way that you can kind of go deeper into this. The Queen of Cups is very much the archetype of the therapist. She has all the feelings and she can help you understand all your feelings as well. So that brings us to the Empress, who is the embodiment of all these things. She's Anima Mundi, the world soul. She is the great womb, the primal cave, um, and Hecate, you know, Hecate as source. So if you are called to the Empress as your card, it is, like I said, it's a super challenging, complex card to have for a significator or to read um, if she comes up spontaneously or if you use her as an anchor card because she is everything and also nothing. So it's really a great card. It's a card you want to pull, you want to study, you want to really go deep into the energy of the Empress. Look at the symbolism on the card in your deck. Like how is she presented and what does it mean to you to be the source of fertility in the world. You know, she is like all things. I find that the Empress is a really great card that will come up in readings when I am at my fullest. You know, like, so when I am at my most whole self, you know, and I'm, I've got like the motherhood thing going on well, and, you know, teaching and writing is going well. I'm being a good sister, daughter, friend. You know, that's the Empress is kind of like in all those areas. Of course, the shadowy side of the Empress is like when that all starts to fall apart, she is like the complete, you know, kind of insecure disaster zone. If the Empress has a shadowy side, it is about she can destroy in all areas as she can create in all areas. She can destroy in all areas. So she could get you with words. She could get you with emotion. She could ghost you. She could tell you off, ghost you. And then, you know, shadowy um, queen of cups. She can make you feel like shit for doing it. And then queen of pentacles. She can be like, no, honestly, this is what is right for you. Right? <laughs> so she could do all those things. The empress, like I said, a super complex card. If you feel called to have her as your significator, you know, allow yourself some extra space for her medicine. And then if she comes up in a reading, um, you know, allow yourself some time to really get into her medicine because she is one of the most complex cards um, in the deck because she is taking all four of those queens and embodying them and ushering us up into the greater mysteries of the major arcana. So she is like also like expanding us. So she is the moon, the water, the womb, the cave. And she's like being more, be more, be more. I am the very fuel of the world. I am expansion and retraction and all those things. Really challenging, fascinating card um, to sit with, especially if you are Hecatean. Because I would say that that card, the Empress, represents Hecate, whereas we are more likely to be to see ourselves as one of the queens, one of the aspects of the Empress, although we are, of course, also the Empress in many ways, too. Really challenging card. Um, and so that is a bit of an overview of those four queens plus the empress and how you can use them um, to better understand yourself by looking at their deeper meetings and seeing which cards resonate for you and also a way to interpret them when they come up in your readings if you're not already a member of the keeping her keys modern online coven network you can join us by going to keepingherkeys.com slash coven. Um, I'm really excited that I have a new book coming out um, on Samhain <clears throat> that is Entering Hecate's Garden, 
the magic medicine and mystery of plant spirit witchcraft so if you are fascinated by hecate medea and cersei there's no artemis and persephone in this book they'll get a future book um you'll learn lots more about their magic medicine <coughs> and mystery in this book so thank you so much for listening sorry for a little bit of scratchiness here at the end it is a beautiful summer day and all of the green world is just exploding around me so i offer you this beautiful energy of the anima mundi the empress um coming from my my home base here on the coast of nova scotia to you may you be well blessed